It's cold and dark outside. You want a quick, easy home cooked meal? Look no further. Let's make this. Let's start up with chopping two small onions and get those sizzling in a pan with some olive oil on medium heat. Then after a few minutes, add in two cloves of crushed garlic. No need to peel them if you're using a garlic press and saute for another couple of minutes. Now we're going to start with cutting up our carrots into small pieces, ideally perfect cubes if you can. Now a useful tip, in a pinch, these pieces can double up as sugar cubes if you want to offer someone a cup of tea, or dice if you're late for a game of backgammon and missing some pieces. So add your mince into the pan and really let it get some good brown and flavour, followed immediately by your carrots and then some herbs and spices. I'm using some thyme oregano and then for a bit of kick some sriracha and chilli flakes. Oh, and if your new home happens to have a rosemary bush in the garden, feel free to chop some fresh herbs into the mix and really let those flavours wake up. So in with some more vegetables, for those of you still keeping to your New Year's resolutions. That's a whole head of chopped broccoli and also a can of tomatoes, along with two thirds of a can of water if it's looking a little too thick. For some more flavour, you can add in a stock cube but remember this when you're adding salt down the line, as well as adding a quarter cup of red wine if you have some lying around. We're going to let the whole pot simmer away for a few minutes until the carrots are soft, but still have a bit of a bite. Not too much bite though. Bah, bad carrot. Take off the lid, get your salt pot and give it a good few pinches of kosher salt and then about 20 cranks of black pepper in your new fancy wooden pepper grinder. So to help thicken this sauce up, I'm going to use a bit of corn flour. Bought for those 2% of guys from Utah watching my videos. Howdy guys. Let's use some cornstarch. Shockingly bad American accents aside, that's two tablespoons of water combined with one tablespoon of corn flour that we've mixed into a slurry and added back into our mixture. Then pop on your lid and put it to the sides until you're ready to assemble the final dish. So onto our mashed potatoes. A handy tip I learned from this Wysak cooking book is to just drop them on your chopping boards and magically you have chopped potatoes. Plunk them up into a pan, add water, season with salt, Boil till tender. Feel free to drain through the holes in your lid if you've lost your colander when you move place. And then also mash it with a fork if you appear to have mislaid your potato masher as well. Adding in some butter, milk or non-dairy alternatives to loosen it up a bit. Just before you're ready to bake, add in some frozen peas at the last minute to help them stay fresh for as long as possible. Now spoon your mince mixture into your baking dish of choice. I'm going about two thirds of the way up to leave plenty of space for my potatoes. By the way, any extra mince or leftovers can be Tupperware and put in the fridge for a couple of days or for the freezer indefinitely. Now slather on a good layer of your potato mixture on top of your baking dish and decoratively give it a bit of texture. This will help it become extra crispy in the oven. So into your oven that you've remembered to preheat, I'm going to set it to 180 Celsius, or for you four Utah viewers out there, that's 350-ish Fahrenheit, or 453 Kelvin, or 18 Fnorkels. It'll take about 45 minutes in your preheated oven, then slap on the grill, or broiler for you four Utah viewers, onto high power for about five minutes until it's extra crispy on top. Then once it's all crispy to your liking, take it out of the oven, give it about 10 minutes to help cool and firm up, or if you're really hungry and don't mind burning your tongue, then dig in. Carve out a large portion into your bowl, try not to make too much of a mess if you're doing this one-handed. Sprinkle with some extra fresh herbs like basil or rosemary, and get ready for the best meal you've cooked all year. So for an impartial taste test, I've got a few of my friends around to try it. 
So what do you guys think? Well, superb job as always, Raffles. Great work. Well, I completely agree with my handsome friend here. I thought it turned out great. Oh, and thanks again. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Hope for some more regular monthly videos in the new kitchen coming soon. Stay subscribed, or please subscribe in general.